hey guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl ju and today i am back with another video for you guys so today's video just like the title says are you struggling to pray are you in a place of lukewarmness if you are this video is hopefully going to help you to get out of that place and into a place of fervency and uh prayer and intimacy with the lord okay So I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I have my life put together because I don't and we're all the work in progress and sometimes we find ourselves in a state of lukewarmness for some reason. It could be because maybe, you know, God gave you the gift that you've actually been praying for all these years and now the gift has taken over your life to the point where you don't have time for him anymore or maybe he didn't do the thing you're asking for and then you got disappointed and you just can't bring yourself to prayer. I have been on both ends of the spectrum. You know, you could be in the middle. You could be that, oh, I just am so lazy. I'm very lazy. Social media is ruining my life and ruining my relationship with God. It could be anything. It doesn't matter what it is. The thing is that we know that we're lukewarm and that we can get out of it. The Bible says if we are lukewarm, Jesus says he will spew us out of his mouth. And we don't want that. Uh, a few weeks ago, I realized that my husband and I, we weren't connecting. Our relationship was just going down. Like, in terms of communication, we weren't really speaking as much. Like, we would talk about, what do you want to eat? Oh, this. Oh, I forgot. I got in, I got the mail. Blah, blah, blah. Just basic stuff. We weren't really gisting, like, talking the way we should or we used to. And I noticed that when he came home from work, he was on his phone, like, doing some NFL drafts or NBA draft, whatever it is he was doing. Or he was watching a game on TV or he was actually playing a game, playing the game. I'm like, you know, I was just boiling inside. Like, this boy, he doesn't want to like me. He doesn't want to have time for me. And then one day, I couldn't take it anymore. And so one morning, I woke him up from sleep. I'm like, bruh, wake up. I got to talk to you. And I know he doesn't like that when I wake him up just to have a long conversation. <laughs> Especially when he's not ready to wake up yet. And so he woke up and I'm like, look, this is not going to work. I just ran, I was just ranting. I was like, well, you're this, you're that, you're always doing this, da, da 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 And he said, sorry. He apologized and he left for the day. And it took three days. Three days later, I was taking a shower and the Holy Spirit just came with that still small voice. And he said, don't you think that's how I feel? I'm like, what? Excuse, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, what? <laughs> And then, first of all, two things, two realizations hit me. It hit me that I was so disconnected to the point where it took three solid days to realize that that scenario was my life with the Lord. Three days for that to happen. And then also, I realized that, yeah, it's true. That is how I treat the Lord. Like, I don't spend enough time. I don't want to spend time with Him. What am I saying? What am I kidding? You know, when I'm just about doing my own thing and living my own life, I'm always too busy to spend time with God. And I'm like, God, how did I even get here? How did I get to this place where I'm so complacent and relaxing and doing what I want instead of spending time with you? That's what triggered this video. I wanted to share with you guys the steps that I'm taking to make sure that I'm not in that place of lukewarmness again. And I realized that there could be a lot of people out there too that are struggling and that would need some, some help you know, to get out of that place of lukewarmness. So the very first thing you want to do is acknowledge that you are lukewarm. You know, you have to be truthful to yourself. You can't lie. You can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to yourself. You can play church. You can go to church. You can do all the services. If you guys have three services in your church, you can attend all of them. Work in the choir, work in the ushering department, join prayer meetings. You can do everything, but deep down in your heart, you might be lukewarm. And you know it. It's not about the, you know, just doing the things on the outside, but it's more of the heart. Where is your heart? Is your heart where the Lord is or is somewhere else? Have you been doing things out of routine, out of, uh, because, you know, people expect much from me? Or you do it because you love the Lord. So come to that place of realization that I am actually lukewarm, God, and I need help. If you don't realize that you're lukewarm, you will not know that you need help. Okay, the second thing we want to do once we have, once we have acknowledged our lukewarmness is we want to find the why behind seeking God. Why do I need to seek the Lord? Why do I need to spend time with the Lord? What benefit does it have? Do I what do I what do I get out of it? What's in it for me? What's the point of this? Everybody's always yelling, spend time with God, spend time with God. 
is five minutes not enough if i say my prayers in the morning is it not enough why do i need to spend one hour two hours why do i need to cultivate a habit of spending time with god what is it about you want to find a reason why you want to have a reason because if you don't think that you don't, if you think in your head that i don't need god there'll be no motivation to come to the place of prayer someone said we don't pray to god because we're proud and i'm like wait hold up i'm not proud i love the lord i can never do without him then, was, then the guy was like well then why aren't you praying is that you're too proud you think you got it all by yourself you can do it all by yourself so you don't think prayer is necessary or i don't know why you're not coming to the place of prayer but you want to think deeply in your heart why what why did i become a christian what is the point of this i heard someone say that oh you know when people are always saying spend time with god spend time with god you're already one with god so what are you spending time with him for and this man that was saying this was a preacher and i'm like wait what even jesus when he was on earth here he was god though mind you jesus was god in human flesh he still went to pray to the father how much more are we ordinary human beings we need to pray to god we need to spend not just talk to him five minutes and disappear we need to commune with him that's where we get our confidence from that's where we get our strength from that's where we get the boldness to move forward that's how we know that we can overcome things it's not just by confessing things out of the bible and saying it, saying it, saying it. if you haven't connected with the person that says that said those things you are powerless have you guys seen a lion a lion cub that wandered out of the pride and found himself somewhere else even even an actual lion like a grown lion wanders out of the pride and he's in the den of hyenas i'm telling you that lion is to, they will eat that lion up all the hyenas gather together they will eat up that lion you want to be in your own clan that is where you get your confidence from your boost from so you want to be with the father he's the one that gives us our identity so you need to spend time with god i don't know if you've been in a place of prayer and you come out you feel like you can turn water into wine <laughs> and spending time with god just makes me a better person it gives me navigation and direction for life you know i need to grow if i'm not spending time with god i'm not increasing i'm going to be decreasing in in my in my relationship in my work in my christianity you know, you want to spend time with God. Point number three to spending time with God is you want to schedule a time. You want to schedule a time. We're very busy in this world that we live in. Scheduling time for the Lord and with the Lord is very, very important. That way you put it in your calendar that at 7 p.m. every single day, I'm going to be spending an hour or two hours in my closet talking to the Lord that way it doesn't matter what happens all through the day or you know all the activities once it's time as long as you're one of those people that actually keep to time and keep your appointments once it's time you bundle up everything and you go spend time with the lord if you say that i will pray today i will pray today if you don't have an actual time you will never pray i promise you trust me it has happened to me before I don't have a, a specific time and I'm like, yeah, I will pray when I get up in the morning. And then I get up in the morning and there is an email that looks urgent that I want to respond to. And by the time I respond to that one, there's a thousand other things to do. Next thing you know, I'm, my day has started and I did not include God in my day. You want to schedule time. A time that is con conducive or convenient for you. Um, maybe in the morning when you get up in the morning or in the evening before you go to bed but a time that you can actually focus not a time when you're half asleep half awake a time that you can actually give to your to the Lord just the way you give time to your tasks at hand when you want to study for an exam you study you know you don't want anybody to distract you that's how you want to, to create a schedule and a time for God block out a time in your calendar and actually commit to that time the lord is a gentleman i've realized he will show up at the time you told him that he should show up the time that you say you want to pray he will be there if you're not there he's a busy man too he will go and do other things that he has to do and i know people are like what, what? i know the lord's presence is omni he's an omnipresent god he's everywhere at the same time but there's also something called the manifest presence of god i've, I've experienced it before what happened was one time in my life i was trying to uh and my husband just got home one time in my life i told the lord i will spend time with you i saw i saw time in that morning i was so tired i fell asleep i was half asleep half awake and i i felt like somebody was sitting at the edge of my bed i felt it 
and I knew it was the Lord. He was there. I looked, oh, it was time for prayer. I'm like, oh God, I'm so tired. I felt like he sat down there looking at the watch like, okay, I'll give you some more minutes. And I, after a while, I felt like the person got up and left just because I, I didn't get up. I slept. I literally, I was struggling with sleep until the time for prayer passed. And I felt like he just left like, I'll come back later because girl, I ain't got time for this. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God. And so after that time, I knew that God actually keeps the time. When we tell him that, Lord, meet me here. He will meet you at that time. So schedule a time and keep to that time. Amen. Amen. Next thing you want to do is you want to pick a place. Recently, I've noticed that people have been, um, you know, creating prayer rooms and war rooms out of their closet or a room out of their house. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. If you don't have that space, you don't have to go extra miles to do all of that. It could be just the seats in your car. It could be um, just a small corner. It could be uh, whatever it is, but you want to pick a, a place that you will meet with God every single day, daily. And my husband is home. Hi, honey. Hello. What did you buy? Like I said, it doesn't have to be anything fancy if you don't have. I remember with me when I started my journey with intimacy with the Lord, I went to the thrift store and I got a pillow, a red pillow. That pillow is not for sleeping, it's for my knees. Um, and I keep that pillow at a small, because I didn't have like a closet to run into. I still don't have a big closet where I can go into and 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 set up all the lights and everything i just have a small corner in my house so i put that pillow there every time i walk past that pillow i'm judged to come I, i'm reminded i have to pray it could also be that you don't have a place but you can take walks i've seen people do prayer walks where they um you know just get out in the morning as they're walking and they're praying to the lord you can do that too but you want to pick a place that you will meet with him it's like going on a date with someone the guy says, hey, are you free on Thursday at 7 p.m.? Like, yeah, okay, would you like to go out with me? We're going to go to Texas Roadhouse, for instance. Who goes to Texas Roadhouse for a date anyway? But yeah, <laughs> and he's like, and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm free. So you know you're going to Texas Roadhouse. So that's the same thing. The next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and set the tone. Um, setting the tone is very, very important because sometimes we come to the place of prayer with heavy hearts, with anxiety, uh, sometimes the enemy has you in a chokehold where he he bombards you with everything. You know, the devil doesn't want you to pray, obviously. He doesn't want us to spend time with God because he knows how impactful that is to our lives. So he will bring everything your way. So for me, I realized that when it's time to pray, I remember that, oh my God, that message, I didn't send that message. Oh, that email, I never sent that email. Oh, that client asked me to call, I didn't call. Oh my God, I, I missed this or I missed that. I will start thinking of all the things that I, I, I missed that I'm supposed to do. Um, and so you want to set the tone with worship, set an atmosphere of worship and eliminate all that extra noise and all the extra distraction. So put some worship music that you like and just spend time soaking it in, you know, and allowing yourself to release all that, you know, baggage that you're coming with. Just drop it at his feet. So you want to set the tone with music, with worship, you know so yeah now you want to go ahead and talk to your father talk to him as a friend don't talk to him like he's the principal of your university of your high school or he's the uh is your banker or he's your business associate talk to him like, like a friend so use informal words to speak to him the bible says jesus was teaching his disciples when you're praying, no need for vain repetition and using big big words use words that even you can understand and break down god is not intimidated by the words that we use but we don't want to come to him with pride in our hearts we want to come to him with humility so talk to him like a dad and he's there and he's willing to help you to to change he's not judging you and saying you you you, you you're going to hell he's happy that you're there he's very glad that you're in his presence trying to spend time with him so when you come to the presence of god um don't let the devil shame you to believe that oh the lord doesn't want to hear you you this prodigal son he doesn't want to talk to you. He wants to talk to you after. He's very eager to speak to you. He's happy. He's like the the, the son, the father of the prodigal son. He was actually, he ran to the roads to embrace his child. Before the son even got home, his father was on the road there waiting for him to hug him. So you want to come to him and talk to him like a father because he understands and he loves you. Okay? 
when you're done talking to the lord about all the things that you have to say to him the next thing you want to do is practice silence it's very important that we're silent before the lord to hear what he has to say because we know prayer is not a monologue it's a dialogue between two people between you and god so you want to practice this attitude of keeping quiet before him let the lord speak um, and he will speak. I'm sure people are wondering like, so am I supposed to sit here until I hear a voice from heaven? No, you're not going to hear a voice from heaven. I mean, you might if that's how he wants to talk to you, but he, he wants to talk to you the way that he wants to talk to you. And so many a times you realize that you just have a knowing in your heart that hmm, the prayer I pray has just been answered. You just feel like, you know, you just feel burden lifting or burdens lifted and you know that your prayer has been answered. Um, you know, sometimes it could be that he just drops a word in your spirit and you're like, oh, Matthew 5, 14. Let me go and check it. Da, 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 da. Oh, I am the light of the world. The city set on the hill is not hidden. You know, depending on what you've prayed about, sometimes he might ignore all the things you said in terms of requests and he will do something different in your life. Sometimes you, you know, you'll be praying for, Lord, I need a new car. I need a new house. And then he goes, takes you to Proverbs and shows you how he wants to give you wisdom. You know, it's you have to practice silence. If you're too quick to leave the presence of God, you will not you will not benefit enough from the things that you know that He has for you. So you want to stay there and be quiet before the Lord. If you cannot hear anything, just you know, just maybe hum a song or just sing a song or just allow yourself to let go and let the Lord take over you. And you will, you know, over time you will start to you know hear His His voice will become vivid and clear for you to hear. Amen. Now, the last point that I have for you guys is after you're done doing all these things, obedience is the next thing. You want to obey because the Lord is going to give you instructions. He's not just going to, you know, okay, bye. He will give you instructions. And when the Lord brings instructions your way, the thing you want to do is you want to obey. Obedience is so key because then you show him that you're actually serious with this journey and with this walk that you're having with him. I remember with me when I started my journey of like trying to cultivate intimacy with the Lord, he dropped in my spirit to do something. Oh my God, that thing was so hard for me to do. It took my whole life to do what I did. And every time I would come to prayer, he would be nudging me like, this thing, this thing, this thing. I'm like, can you just forget about it? Can you, it's not even that big of a deal. Can you like let it go? And he's like, no, uh, this one is very important. And I finally did it. It took everything for me to do it. And I finally obeyed that voice. And I promise you, my prayer life went up. Like it's it skyrocketed because it felt like he was like clapping for me. <laughs> Good job, you finally did it. And he just opened more, like a new dimension just opened for me. And I was just so glad that I was able to let go of that heavy burden, trying to disobey God and not do the thing. So obedience is very key. When, it's, when you start walking with him, he will start dropping things. Because we're not perfect. He could start dropping like this person. I don't want you to be with this person again, cut this person off. And it might be so hard, but once you do it, a new dimension opens in prayer. Like once you come to the place of prayer, you're 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 on cloud nine. Like you cannot, you're just blown away with God's goodness and love, and your prayer life just starts to increase and to pick up. So you want to obey the voice of God when you start to hear it. So guys, that is my video today. I hope you guys like this video. I hope it's encouraging to you or to someone. If you think you know someone that might be struggling, you can share this video to them and hopefully it helps them. So I hope it's helpful to you guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!